Hi, welcome back. So in the last video, we got a basic intro to what the grid system is. And as I said, then in this video, we are going to start, start writing some actual things so that we can see how it is actually implemented and then start using it in our own code, right? So I'll just open an editor from here. So I have this now. And I'll make the sizing appropriate. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to save this first as grid demo dot html and let me just increase the font size a little so that it's visible yep so now i'm gonna get my standard boilerplate yep and now i'll indent this as usual and then as usual i will change the title grid system right and now what i'm gonna do is uh, first i'm just simply gonna put some h1 here right and let me just say this is my h1 no this is too basic the grid system of bootstrap all right so now i'll open this up I see the grid system of bootstrap and the first thing that I need to do of course is I need to get bootstrap and if you remember we downloaded bootstrap in the last video I still have it downloaded so I'm gonna use this method you could also use the CDN which in which everything would be the same except you will have a link here right instead of this bootstrap.css so yeah so now if I refresh I should see this change a little and if it does means that bootstrap is correctly included and yes it does i see it has a better font now so that's great all right so now the first thing that i want to show you is the container and you know this small shortcut that now you'll have to do div something like div and then class is equal to um, let's say container, I'll show you what it is a lot. You will have to do something like this a lot where the class might be different, but you'll be doing like something like div class is equal to something. And I'm going to show you a shortcut for that. You can do dot container and then press enter. And it will give you this by default. And you, if you want multiple classes, you can do dot container dot. Let's say I have something called my class which I do not, but let's say I do, it gives me these two classes predefined. So you could do this and this could work for other elements too. By default, this is a div, but if you do something like a dot my class, it will give you a tag with class is equal to my class. So this is a really handy shortcut, uh, not actually related to the grid system, but yeah. So I'll do a dot container and you know the first rule of a grid is that everything needs to be inside of a container and let's see what the effect of a container is first so if i move this inside the container you will see a container of the lo on a lot of pages and you will not see container on a lot of pages uh, it actually depends on what you want the style to be but you know this is what it does and this looks a little weird because this yeah so um, I should do text center on the F1. I'll make a simple style tag again. Now I've done the style tag almost always until now except the exercise. And that is because we haven't had any really complex styles apart from the exercise until now. And that's why I do this. So I'll do H1 or I'll do the whole HTML document. I'll do star text align center. All right, so if I refresh, I see this is centered. So now you see uh, that, well, you don't see the difference in center right here, but here, okay, I'll remove the center for now. So you see that this comes 
after some spacing and if we inspect the container oh, where's the container yeah here it is we see that uh, you're right so this is the content this inner box and we see that this is limited to uh, you know a small width which is not equal to the browser width and the rest of it is a little padding then border which we don't have and the rest of it is margin so this is a container which we will use a lot and you know in the facebook example too this could be wrapped inside of a container right you never know it could be because we see that there's nothing here and you could have anything outside the container too so they must have put this outside the container and that is how you could make something like this so yeah so this is the container i'll bring the text align back and yeah and just to you know always keep track of this although you would not do something like this normally and i need to put a dot in front of this yeah so i'll do a background color let's say and again my favorite background f7 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 I'll give box shadow. I need a hyphen in between. And this needs to be, let's say, a little bigger so it's visible. 5px, 5px. And then I'll do black. Let's see how that looks. Ah, 5px is too much. get back to two yeah right so we have something like this and now we're gonna make the actual grid right so to make a grid first thing is you need to be inside of a container and one thing uh, we see that a container is necessary in a grid right but does does that mean that we cannot have a grid if on the whole page if we want to no it does not mean that you can have something known as a container fluid and if I refresh and I inspect. Mm, where's my body? Yeah. I see that this covers the whole of the page. Uh, you can see from the H1, this covers the whole page. If I go to this, this is almost the whole page, and the remaining one is padding. That is why it is not covered in the content. So that is what you can do if you want to use the complete page and a grid system. Right? So I make this container again and so now in any grid you will always have a row inside of a container and a column inside of a row. So let's just make a row first and uh, everything I'm saying a row a column and all of these they are divs with classes of something that make them a row or that make them a column. So a row means div class equal to row. So now let me put a div in here first and let me put some content in here saying this is my first column. So I see I get this and if I put another div right now and say this is my second column. I see this comes right here. So this is because of the styling of the row. Now you might be thinking that these should come on different lines because they are divs and they are block level elements and you're completely right that should that is what should happen. However, it does not happen because of this class equal to row. If I remove this, they do come on separate lines and they also get centered. But the row does not let that happen because you can imagine that in a grid you would want, want things to be side by side right so that is something that the row is doing now what you can do is you have to give a class equal to something to all of these so in le column you will have a standard structure of the class you will have coa dash you will always have this whenever you're making a column this actually represents that this is a column and now the next thing you will have 
is either the breakpoint, we'll see that later, but first we're gonna see column dash two. Or let's say, so okay, so about the number. So what the row does is, uh, it divides this whole horizontal space available to it, which is this amount of space in the container and the whole page in container fluid. It is divided into 12, you know, let's say 12 units. So what you can do in a container is, uh, in a row is, you can give uh, some separate amount of units to all the columns. Like you could give six units to this column and six units to this column. And then what will happen is that they will take up exactly half of the available space at all times. No matter what happens, how small this window becomes or how big this window becomes, it will not matter because they will always take half of the space. And why is that? because they have been given six units each out of the 12. So whenever you're making a grid, you would normally just, you know, make a split of your units among all your columns and make it a total of 12. That is all that you need. So here, let me do column six. Or let me do, yeah, I'll do six first. And if I refresh, I see they get half the space and I inspect this right now, let me see. Yeah, so div class equal to column six, as you can see, is taking up exactly half of the container, including the padding, right? So this is the use of the grid. This is actually all that a grid is. Now you could have separate code in, you know, both the columns and they would come side by side perfectly without any issues. So this is what the grid does. And you could do something like four and let's say eight. And now if I refresh, you see this takes up 8 units out of the 12 and the right one, this takes up only 4 units. So you could play around with this a lot. So for now, we see that this remains the same no matter what happens. And if I still inspect this, where's my div row, div column 4, yeah. So here it is, this is my div column 4. I'll bring this up. No use, yeah. So my div column 4 still takes only 4 units. But you could have, you know, something, some need in which you might want this to take 4 units when the screen size, screen size is large. But you would want it to take, both of them to take 6 units each when the screen size is small. Right, so how you could do that is using the breakpoints. So again, let's go to the docs and see what the breakpoints are. Documentation, layout, grid. All right, so I'll go to the breakpoint section. So these are some rules that you have and you, you know, don't actually have to worry about this. You can see them if you want to. But I this is the first time I've read them myself, and I've been able to use the grid really effectively until now. Right? So these are the small, these are the breakpoints that you have: extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. This is according to the width of your page, right? And that is what this pixel is. So we have something like this. So what we have done for now. Uh, we've left it blank, right? Uh, so for the breakpoint, you would have something like column SM8 for this and column SM4. So this means that this is for small because we see that small has column dash SM dash. And after this dash, you will have your number, the number of units you are giving to the column. Same for medium, you have MD, large, you have LG, and extra large, you have XL, right? So this is all what the column is. And the one thing that you do need to know, which is actually quite important, that if you want the size to be eight and four for medium, large and extra large, then you do not have to go in and set medium, large and extra large separately. If you set medium, large and extra large will take that by themselves. If you set small, all of these three will take them by themselves. 
and let me see this is the point that talks about them grid breakpoints are based on minimum width media queries meaning uh, forget this you know complex line from this meaning meaning they apply to that one breakpoint and all those above it that is small applies to small medium large and extra large but not excess so uh, you know what we did right now was column dash eight so we were applying it to everything above extra small which is actually everything so that is why we are having 8 and 4 on all screen sizes but if we do something like column medium 8 and medium 4 so we'll have the 8 and 4 separation in the medium size and the large and the extra large and let's say for the excess we make it 12 12 and this is the use that you'll have for this a lot that so what i've done is i made this 12 so now only one column will come on one line and then the other one will stack below it and let's see what actually is happening so this remains the same because until medium everything is the same so we see this is our first breakpoint this is medium and as soon as we get to small this is now small they get stacked one above the other and if i inspect this I see this now takes up the whole space and that is exactly because we have given a column 12 for excess and above which is what we needed so this you will use when say you have two components side by side on a large screen size but of course on a size as small as this um, you will never have two components side by side you don't want to have a component in just this amount of size and the other one in this that will look really cramped so what you will do is you will make it uh, you know some ratio when it is large and medium and as soon as you get to small you will stack them above each other by using this column 12 so this is what you'll do a lot just an example we will use this a lot in other things too so yeah so this was what i was talking about uh, with the grid system this is all that the grid system has and now you could have some really good code in here and that would show up in just this amount of space right in this amount of space so i'll make this medium right so and it is not just that you can have one row like if this has exhausted 12 you could duplicate this down and you could change all of this in here of course uh, let me do this four and eight this time I refresh I see this happens oh I've put this outside the container that's the problem all right so I see that uh, in the large this takes up eight units this takes up four units and in the second row, this takes up four units, this takes up eight units. And just to give you a better idea, I'll style the column, uh, I have medium, right? Yeah, eight, to have a background color of some different kind, let's say dark golden rod. Let's try that out. So we see this is one column uh, and this is other. And in the second row, this is one column and this is the other column. So now if I keep bringing this down, 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 down. I now see that they get stacked above each other. And that is because these two are stacked because of this. And these two are stacked because of this. And in the end, you have a very nice looking thing. here. So that is what you could do with the grid system. That is all. And we'll see a lot of applications for this from the next video right we'll try to make some really good projects with this too so that's it for this one i'll see you later